Alright, here we are again with a, another gaming discussion topic. And um, this episode is going live on somewhere between the 14th and the 15th. I haven't decided on what day I'm uploading these yet. Um, we're going to be talking today about, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the Assassin's Creed 4 news that leaked that came out on February 6th. Or 7th, I mean. On the 7th, yeah. Um, during the DICE little convention thing. Um, I'm here with Ricky, Jalen, and Perry again. Yay! Yo. Ooh, yeah. And we're probably going to be the mainstay crew for this, for the most part, like we were with the podcast, but that's not always surprising. So, um, the biggest thing is that Assassin's Creed 4, or whatever the next game is going to be, I'm guessing it's 4, is not going to be coming out in 2013, meaning they're taking at least a few extra months to develop this one. Mm -hmm. I think they're what, aiming for spring 2014, but uh, the and also it's a whole new development team. So I think out of all of us here, Perry's the biggest fan of Assassin's Creed. So what do you think about this news of the new protagonist, new timeline, and where do you think we're going? Uh, well, since I'm normally the one that goes last on these kind of things, I'll let you guys go first, because I think you can sum up your opinions faster than I can. Um, okay, so... so I, 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 it's just easier for, like, I usually like to think about my opinions more, like, once I, like, give more time to develop, but I'll let you guys go first, since that's normally how this works. Alright, well, I don't want to go first, so... Well, Jalen or Ricky? I'll go ahead. I have never played Assassin's Creed before. I played the PSP one, and that one was shit. But, <laughs> judging from the ending of 3, which I have seen, because one day I was curious, I was like, oh, let me see what's so bad. Oh, what the fuck? And, um, yeah, I don't understand what happened. I don't, I don't want to understand. None of us do. No. Like, even as a fan, I don't understand it. If this this could be a hit or miss this new one because you don't we don't know if they're this new team is going to do worse or if it's going to do better. Mm. I can go either direction. Personally, I don't care because I don't, I haven't played Assassin's Creed and I will care when I actually get to play one. But I still wouldn't want to understand the ending. I recommend starting with the original just so that way you get the basic idea of it down and then go through with the SEO trilogy and then just stop there. Yeah, I was probably going to buy the Ezio trilogy, but I'm going to buy the first one first. Which you can well, pass on the Revelations. The Revelations? One. Okay, you got to admit, as crappy as as three's ending was, Revelations had a better ending. Hmm. Well, all the games have a better ending than three, but Revelations okay. added the least. Admit, because Revelations had a much more difficult time with the fact that it had two two endings for Ezio and Altair and a cliffhanger. That's that's really hard to do. But sorry, we're getting off topic. You were saying, still saying, Ricky? I still see uh, like I don't even know. Like from what I've seen of, of Assassin's Creed, it looks pretty fun. Besides three, because I really don't care much for the main character because I heard he's a whiny little bitch. He is. He's probably my least favorite. Like out of the main characters that, out of series that I enjoy, I think he's my least favorite. Who, Connor? Yeah, I don't like Connor at all. I agree. I just had no reason to get, like, you know, his story. Oh, yeah, in the end. Um, it had potential to be real dead. cool. Everyone he knows and loves is dead. I haven't heard that story before. Well, I mean, it's, yeah, that's true. I mean, it's just like, it, it, I think his story had potential to be really cool, like the segments where he's interacting with his dad. I thought that had real potential to go somewhere, but they never did anything with it. Mm. Yeah, it seems like by three they were just milking the cash cow. Well, they seemed, already were. Well, I mean, it seemed like the whole historical angle of it, it felt like, it didn't feel like any of the historical figures had any relevance to your plot, and they were just cameos. Mm. They were there just to be there. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Whereas someone like um, like Da Vinci, he was relevant to the plot because he helped Ezio get his gear. Like, why didn't they make Ben Franklin do something like that? That would have been awesome. 
Exactly. But, like it's just like they didn't do they they it's wasted potential. That's basically what the bottom line of say AC three is: is wasted potential. Yeah. Incredibly but, wasted potential. Disappointing. All right. Well, Jalen, what are your thoughts about this? Well, um, I played the first Assassin's Creed and I played a bit of two. Um. I guess I'll be in, ended up playing three because um, I'm planning to get the uh, the bundle because I need a new PS3. But um, I think this is something that Assassin's Creed Assassin's Creed needs. Um, a, a new development team will bring something fresh. I mean, a lot of these. Uh, well, I feel that um, the series so far has kind of stagnated a bit. If that's safe to say. On gameplay, especially. Yeah, I, I I would I would agree with that first to some level. Mm-hmm. So um, hopefully this new team will put the series in a better direction and hopefully give it a good shot in the arm, basically. Yeah, and hopefully clear up anything that was all the ridiculous things that happened in three. Matt, your thoughts? All right, so I've played a little bit of one. I played a fair amount of two, and I got about, you know, halfway through three. I didn't play Brotherhood of Revelations. But all the games, they feel different, but at the same time, they feel like they're the same. And that's because of the gameplay. They do tweak it here and there, and they'll add new things here and there. But what the series really needs... Is if they're going to keep the gameplay the way it is, which, you know, I'm not going to complain too much because it works. Mm-hmm. But it needs a serious, serious polishing. There are things when you... This is, considering you count the SEO Trilogy, this is what, the fourth, fifth, fifth game, right? Fifth yeah. main game. Fifth game. This is their fifth main game, and yet you're still having such serious issues with your combat system... And especially just like your graphics in general glitching well, fair, and freaking out. It was running on a new engine. Mm. But even then, like if you don't have an excuse for it, if your engine isn't ready, don't release the game. Fair yeah. enough. Like, and they were, they were just so eager to make to the milk this cash cow, which they're still trying to do. Because I'm hearing that they're well, we're getting this year as, a, as another Vita title. Oh God. They said we're still. I'm hearing we're still getting the Assassin's Creed game this year. It's just not a main one. They're still milking this cash cow for everything that's worth. But what they need to do is they need to stop being Activision. This isn't Call of Duty. You need. This is a game that needs to evolve. It needs. When you add a new setting, new character, we need more. Like Perry said, we need more from the historical figures. Now, like what they did with three. With three, they had so many historically important people in this you one so setting. Much, yeah, you had so much potential with that. And just like, the stuff with Paul Revere, yeah, it was cool you interacted with him, but you were playing as backseat driver. Yeah, and then like, you know, it's sad that from the one I've seen, the most fun doing with Washington is in this What If DLC. Yeah. Which actually sounds interesting. It does, because I... You know, what if it had happened that way? Like, it's, it is a solid thing, a solid idea, but is it going to be good? I have a season pass for Assassin's Creed 3, so I'm going to get it for free. But I'm going to be really upset if I have to beat the game to use it. That's going to make me really upset. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's fair. I agree. I haven't heard anything that's saying that we do have to beat the game, but I'm going to say that you probably do. And when I, if I find out that I have to do it, um, I'm probably never going to get to the... I'm just going to watch playthroughs of the King Washington DLC and get to it when I get to it. Because mm-hmm. if I have to beat this whole game, we're like, I haven't... I don't know, maybe it's just my bad luck, but I have experience... When we, I was recording a playthrough that I canceled because the game was frustrating me, on the third part, the game had a glitch that made it unplayable. You remember that, Jalen? Were you there for that? Nearsighted glitch. That's what I'm going to call it. Yeah, like everything became blurry, and then I couldn't move. I couldn't shoot the gun. Now, I was supposed to shoot a gun and blow something up, and I couldn't do it. He would not draw the weapon. And sometimes when you loaded it, you didn't even have it. Yeah. 
I didn't have it at all, but when I restarted the game, all of a sudden, oh, it's okay. That's like, weird. You know, they really need this new team, whoever they are. I'm I'm guessing it's in house still. We'll get we'll get to that matter later. Yeah, mm-hmm. going on the presumption that it's in house, they need to take this extra time that Ubisoft is giving them for this title, and work on the gameplay. I get that a story and characters and all that are important, but at this point, if you want this franchise to keep, you know, getting your good review scores, like I've noticed that for a while, their scores are steadily decreasing little by little. Yeah. Because even unlike Call of Duty, for some reason people are picking up on the fact that this is getting, the gameplay is getting stale. Mm-hmm. People are actually picking up on that, but whatever. I don't understand the gaming community sometimes, but we need an, a refined gameplay engine, and we need a story that, like, well, we're in the past or whatever. I want to be able to interact more with the people of that era like you could in Assassin's Creed 2. Yeah. They need to bring that back, because that's what made it more interesting to me. I don't want to, like, watch people do stuff and then be like, oh, yeah, look, Connor was there. Good for Connor. Good for him. Like, who cares if he was there or not? He didn't really do anything. He was just a witness. Yeah, he was wit- Oh, look, I watched the American Revolution. My my family is still dead. My friends like, are still dead. This is a question. That awesome trailer where it showed that dude going through the uh, people, the, all the British people. Looked like it was in the middle of a war. Does that actually even happen? No. Mm-hmm. There's a segment. In, there's a segment in the game where you can do that, but you can't reenact the trailer shot, which sucks. Which is stupid. Like, why even? You know, that was their first bait and switch. And I, I feel the, the, the hype they made for Assassin's Creed Three was bait and switch. They tried to make it for casuals. No, they didn't make it for casuals. Mm, no? yeah, they that. just they focus more on trying to catch your eye, trying to catch. The eye of people like me who just taking a back seat and were and went, wasn't playing this franchise. But when I saw a trailer like that, I was like, "Ooh, look, that looks pretty amazing. I want in on that." And then when I got the final product, I felt robbed. Well, not completely robbed, but you know, when you see scenes like that and you don't get to do it, mm-hmm. that's not fair. I hate when when. It's not just Assassin's Creed, because they're not the first ones to do it. But I hate when that happens, because it's like, don't show me stuff I can't do. That, that's my two cents on that particular subject. Perry? Okay, well, like you guys said, like, man, I think you were the one who said, like, out of everyone here, I'm probably the biggest Assassin's Creed fan out of the bunch. Is that fair to say? Yeah. 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 Okay. You know, I've played through every single like, Assassin's Creed game ever since it came out. I still have my limited edition box sets of the first game, the second game, the Brotherhood Revelations, and now three. I literally love this franchise to death ever since it came out, because this is like, a his, for me, as someone who's a history nut, this is like a dream come true. Like, the idea of having a 3D city to run around in a historical time period and interact with these historical figures, like, that was something I've wanted for years. And Assassin's Creed was, like, the game that was, like, it was almost like a game that's built, ma- like, made for me. And, I'll, and I usually don't like to go in with that mentality, but it's something, like, this is something that I can absolutely love instantly. And, and like you guys, I was very disappointed. I mean, I was, I, like, for some reason, the hype for Assassin's Creed 3, it wasn't so much, like, when I remember when the AC1 came out, I watched the trailers for that obsessively, like, I, to the point where it's almost sickening. And then AC2 came out, and the hype was just about the same. And AC Brotherhood came out, I was excited for that as well. Revelations came, still excited. For 3, I was very, very quiet on terms of the hype in comparison to the rest of the series. I don't know whether it was me saying, like, I was quietly confident in in Assassin's Creed 3, or was that I could foresee that there was going to be a problem with this game. And... And I'll be quite honest, I don't think Native America, like, Colonial America would have was the best setting to go with for this new, for Assassin's Creed 3. It's a cool choice, but I don't think it lended itself well to what the Assassin's Creed series has built itself on, which is parkour and free-running in cities, because there isn't that much to run around in. In fact, if you guys, like, did you guys notice when you were playing through Assassin's Creed 3 that most of the time you spent it on the ground? 
Yeah, because it was it's near impossible to get up in the trees. I I didn't mind getting up in the trees. I did think that that was kind of a cool way to get around, but it just didn't feel like Assassin's Creed. And I I I don't mind Ubisoft trying to push the envelope or trying to push the mechanics a little bit, but I felt like they incorporated so many like just pointless. Like, there's so many wasted potential opportunities for that and wasted gimmicks like. Like, okay, for example, the pirate ship stuff. The pirate ship stuff was cool. I really liked that, and I felt like you were actually in command of a ship, and it felt awesome. Was that not true? Like, did you guys... I think, the, uh, I think that was probably the best addition they added. Yeah, was like, but that was, like, it, it felt cool, right? It felt really cool when you were in the control of a pirate ship. Yeah. And then, but the stuff like the hunting mechanic, completely useless. Oh, Completely. yeah, that was there for trophies and assigned missions, and that was Completely it. Completely useless. I mean, Far Cry 3 had a far better hunting mechanic. I mean, it was one that made you want to hunt different animals because it was useful to the gameplay. This one was just completely superfluous and did not mean a thing. And there are so many wasted potential opportunities for historical figures and interacting with them. Like, you had moments where you were acting with the commander-in-chief of, the, uh, like, George Washington himself. Like, you were talking with him at Valley Forge. You got a chance to see the, like, go, got to the, go to the signing of the Declaration of Independence. I mean, there was, like, there's so much stuff you could have done. Or the Boston Massacre. It would have been cool, like, it would have been so cool if, say, um, like, Connor had inadvertently started the Boston Massacre. That would have been cool. It would have been morbid, but cool. Like, the idea that you were more historically involved, like, the and, because that's what I felt like Ezio and Altair did, like, they felt like you were involved in history in some way, shape, or form. With Connor, he was more of just a passive observer, but, sorry, going off on this tangent, but just seeing, like, going to the subject matter, it, I'm actually really excited and really pleased that Ubisoft is taking the time and saying, look, I think we're starting to realize that this is kind of being run into the ground. I want to give them enough credit to say, that, look, we're running this into the ground. We want to keep Assassin's Creed going, but we need to give it more time to bake. So just basically, we need to bake the bun further in the oven. We need some, We needed more time to make this right and do it well, which I personally have no problem with at all. I very, In fact, I respect them all the more for it, and they're not rushing it out the door, which I feel like they... Would you guys say they kind of did that with the Assassin's Creed? Oh, they were. They were. See, I think if they do like Naughty Dog is with Uncharted roughly every two years, that gives you plenty of time to add new stuff while refining what you already had. Yeah, and I agree. It's just, I, and I really, I really hope that with this new one, that it, I don't know if it's going to be called Assassin's Creed 4. I don't know if it's going to, given the fact that it's a new character and a new time period, I have no idea where they're going to go with this one, but... I can think of a couple of settings where uh, they could possibly go with it, but that's kind of the question I'm going to lead into now. Either way, bottom line, I'm I'm excited. I'm pleased with the fact they're going to take their time with it. I hope that it will that it will make up for the disappointment that was three. Personally, Brotherhood is my personal favorite out of all the Assassin's Creed ones because it takes place in Rome, and that's like my that's like my bread and butter. And so, again, really pleased. I just want I just really want Ubisoft to do this well. Now. With that said, I'm assuming, like, I think it's safe to say that we all assume this is going to be in-house with Ubisoft, correct? Yes. Yeah. Now, let's go on a hypothetical scenario here real quick. Say, by some stroke of luck, that Ubisoft, like, Ubisoft is saying, like, okay, we're not going to let Ubisoft Montreal do this or any in-house studio. That we're just going to publish it. If, by some stroke, that they were going to give this to a third-party developer outside of Ubisoft and just maintain the publishing rights, who would you guys like to see take on Assassin's Creed? Can I go first? Yes. Um, this was the conversation me and Perry had when we came so, up with this whole thing. I, I, think, I feel like I have a good one on my hands. But mine, my pick, and it was my original pick, is Naughty Dog. Because we've seen what they've done with Uncharted, in, in terms of when it comes to re- refining a game engine, when it comes to just platforming in general, they know how to get it done. So I think if I could give it to anyone, I would give it to Naughty Dog for those exact reasons. Mm. And and, the, and to add to your point, they also know how to give good story and good characters. That too, especially that. That's all. That's always a bonus. Oh yeah. But I think if Ubisoft gave it to someone, they'd probably tell them, "Hey, this is where we kind of want you to go with the story, though." Yeah. 
I mean, I don't think it, and, and to be fair, it's not, it wouldn't sound too far-fetched for Naughty Dog to take something like that on, because, I mean, originally, Assassin's Creed was slated to be a PlayStation exclusive way back when the first one was announced. Mm-hmm. And, like, and to be fair, it seems like Assassin's Creed has always favored the PlayStation platform over the 360, is that not true? Yeah, we always get more exclusive stuff. Yeah, it always seems like they favor it. So the fact that it would be give, if it was given to Naughty Dog, it's obviously going to be PlayStation exclusive, which it wouldn't sound too far fetched. Well, the only thing about giving it to Naughty Dog and why, what happened is because they like doing their own stuff. Yeah, exactly. That's the only reason why it wouldn't happen. But if I had control over it, I would give it to them. This we're just speculating and hyper like we're just being like if we could give it to any Dream Studio that we wanted. And you pick Naughty Dog, which is actually a really good pick. I, I, I fully support that, but that's just we're just we're just having fun with this idea. We're just having we're just trying to think of what could be done. Jalen, Ricky, you guys want to take this one? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just going to say Naughty Dog because I love the platform mechanics and Uncharted. Oh, you see. <laughs> well, they're just they're fun. It's fun. Uncharted is fun and. If this ends up being my first Assassin's Creed, I want it to be fun. What about Sucker Punch? What if they did it? Yeah, I was thinking that, actually. Oh, that would be pretty good, too. Yeah. I do have... uh, Okay, I do have my own suit, but go ahead, Jalen. Um, because, uh, Sucker Punch is also... Also kind of delves into the parkour thing with, uh, Infamous. It'd be interesting what they would do with the whole Assassin thing. And they have done stealth before with Sly Cooper. Right, right. So... If they mix that together and add, like, you know, all the awesome stealth kills, like jumping from high places, um, uh, gun- use- the use of guns and things of that nature, and maybe even add in, like, something similar from Infamous, like the whole good and evil thing. Oh, that'd be great. Oh, that would, that would, be, that would be a really good addition. Mm-hmm. Like, I could see that bring, being, like, really a really good uh, addition to the Assassin's Creed series. That would have worked well in 3, because what if you decided, hey, I want to side with the British? Exactly. Oh, that would that would have been a really cool mechanic. Mm-hmm. Now I kind of want that in the next one really bad. Thanks choice for that, Jalen. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's really a good choice. Sucker, okay, so it seems like you guys want either Sucker Punch or Naughty Dog. Either way, it looks like we're staying with in-house Sony people. Yeah, well, that's kind of what we do. Yeah, now that I got PS3, I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Do you want me to go ahead? Go ahead, bro. All right. Now this one, I, this one was imme- this this studio immediately came to my mind. It's like if I could give it to any one Dream Studio, if I could take like Assassin's Creed, one of the set franchises I love most this generation, and I'm give it to any one at all, I would give it to. I would love to see it go to Hideo Kojima and see what he can do with it. Oh my God! Yes. Like, think about it. Okay. Let's take a look at this. He made Castlevania work in 3D. That alone says something. Not to mention, he created, he's created one of the granddaddies or the king of stealth action games, which is Metal Gear Solid. Not to mention, he's also incredible when it comes to telling the story. Yes, and Matt was I, Matt was joking about this earlier. It's like the cutscene would you said the cutscenes would be longer than the original Assassin's Creed game. The opening <laughs> cutscene would be longer than all the other games combined, and it would it only tell you like a like one one hundredth of the overall story. Yeah, which is granted okay a, a trope of Kojima, but to be fair, to give him the credit, at least he has the courtesy to give us details of the story and not leave us hanging with a whole bunch of questions. Because it's not like one of those, like, it's not like Lost where you're just asking questions throughout the whole series and never answers them. Kojima does to, and he takes his time. He never rushed. If there's one thing about Metal Gear games, you can never say that they're rushed. They always take their time. They always try to explain themselves and say, look, it's like A equal, A, A led to B to C, which led to eventually X, Y, and Z. It's yeah, like, they literally every- take their time. Yeah. It, it takes their time, it's patient, it's methodical, and it's well put together. And he tells a great story. Detail yes. is hell, yes. Is it long? Yes. But it's, it is there. The detail is there, and it's always really cool. And I will admit, Metal Gear Solid 4 made me choke up a bit, and it made me tear up a little bit at the end. And so, I mean, I've never, I haven't finished the rest of the Metal Gear games, but I all imagine they're going to be as fantastic as that one. 
But just think about the, what Kojima could do with it. It's like, if you give it to basically the, the master behind stealth games, it's him. It's really, he's the one who knows how to do it best. And so, I feel like he could do a lot with, uh, with Assassin's Creed if he adapted to it. Plus, it's not that much of a stretch for Assassin's Creed to be involved with uh, Konami in some sense, because if you guys noticed in the original, like back in the middle, you saw it four came out, there was an alternate costume where you could dress as Altair. Yeah. And right. Brotherhood, there was a costume where you could dress up as Raiden from Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid 4. Mm-hmm. So it's really not that much of a stretch for Assassin's Creed to go or be basically, or Kojima to have his little fingers in the pie of, um, of Assassin's Creed. Hey, Perry, I got a question for you. It's, it's kind of unrelated, but it's really fast. Okay. Um, back in the day, and during the podcast days, Remember he got into an argument, and I know you guys do that a lot, but you swore up and down to Ricky that you beat Metal Gear Solid 3 on Big Boss Mode, and you just said the only Metal Gear Solid game you've beaten is 4. No, I never, I don't, I never, I, I, never, I don't think I ever said that. I said I was going through 3. I never, I never said I finished it. Oh, because that's kind of where the argument went that way, but as you were. I barely remember it. Uh, I don't. I don't remember ever saying that. If I did, I, I'll. I'll. I will apologize for that because I was wrong. But it's just. I just feel like Kojima could really do a lot with it. Like it's just like the idea just makes me salivate at the opportunity. I was like, if he did take control of that, I would be jumping up and down with joy. It's like it, that would be perfect for him. And to be honest, it would give him a little bit of room to get out of the Metal Gear Solid universe because let's face it. The guy's kind of boxed into what he's doing right now. So that's just my thought. I really would. I really wish that Hideo Kojima or Kojima Productions in general could take over Assassin's Creed because I feel like, and I feel like the pace is slow enough to where it would, it would work. Yeah. All right. So we're, we're already pushing twenty minutes. So let's get our third and final like discussion point. Out there really fast. Um, where do you guys think we're going timeline wise? Hmm. Or where do you want to go? Ooh. That's a tough um, question. I got one in my mind. And it's, it's kind of, you know, you, you guys all say ugh at it because so many games take place there. But I think it'd be pretty awesome to see um, Assassin's Creed and World War II. Europe. I want to kill Hitler. <laughs> yes. Okay. Because you have you do have those cities. Mm-hmm. You have the cities that's, back. Okay, that's that's possible. Yeah. Or let's go to Japan. One of the two. Hmm. That Japan would shit on us, though. <laughs> let's see. What would? Okay, Ricky Jailer, what do you think? I'm thinking 1920s America. Ooh, no one does that at all. I like uh, have like a uh, gang, like um. Or okay. imagine like um, kind of like same place as L.A. Noir. Imagine Assassin's Creed in Los Angeles. Exactly. During, during oh. The, oh man, that would be that would, could potentially be cool. Mm-hmm. That would. The Templars are the mob bosses. Oh. Ooh. Oh my God. Yes. No, 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 no. Here's what the, the Templars could be: the FBI. That's actually better. Oh man, and the assassins of the mob bosses? I and the monsters could be the assassins. Mm-hmm. And that could be how they got rid of them. That would be so cool. Remember, I could how live we, with that. remember how we know the assassins are like basically gone? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, okay, that's another thing that pissed me off in three. It's like it never explained how is it they got so weak. Yeah, I don't know. It seemed like Ezio was trying to build an order that would last centuries. Nan- mm-hmm. Nano machines. But, like, they said there was a lot of them, but remember the scene in the Boston Massacre? There were dudes helping you out everywhere? Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, there's no, there's none of us left. Hey, <laughs> none of us left, Connor. Yeah, you become the only assassin. And then all of a sudden, he's a whole bunch of dudes. Like, where have you guys been? And he's the only one with an assa- a true assassin uniform? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think... I don't, I think... I don't think that was the plot hole they meant to create... But I think it's there. Because it is those, there. those are it, two it, contradicting so events. 
It's mm-hmm. the plot hole so big you could fit a Snorlax through it. Ha! <laughs> that was clever. <sighs> but, well, okay, I, I so really like the idea of the of the mobster thing. That, that'd be great. That would be really yeah. cool. I'd love to see that. After, and I just saw Gangster Squad a few days ago, and like that's got me in full mobster mafia mode right now. Like oh, trench coats, fedoras, and machine guns. <laughs> yep, the whole deal. And it wouldn't be stretch because assassins do use guns. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and not the crappy guns that take five minutes to reload, even though the enemies seem to reload them pretty instantaneously. <laughs> even though it's a musket and they shouldn't be able to re- reload that fast. I know, right? It takes you forever to do it, but they just get it done really fast. What? I've done it. I've shot muskets before, and they take forever. Do they? Do the enemies have perfect accuracy? They are not that accurate, especially that even at that far of a range. They are not. Muskets are just terrible. There's All no right. reason they're not around anymore. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so Matt, you said, um, okay, hold on. Who said which which time period? You said it was um, World War II Europe and in Japan. Jalen, you said uh, 1920s America, right? Right. Okay, like stuff like New York, like 1920s New York or Chicago. I would go to Los Angeles. I think Chicago would lend itself a little bit more interesting. Because mm. that's not a setting that's used as much. True. Anyways, Ricky, what'd you, what would you pick? I am on par with the mob boss idea. With the Ricky. I, lo- I love that. Like, the city, I really don't care. Because that's just a great, that seems like a great idea. In general, mm. like, you know, what else can they really do? It's true. Now they've jumped forward into, like, you know, the more modern era, as you could say. They're either going back in time again, or we, we're going to have to go to one of these more well-known locales. Mm-hmm. Assassin's Creed Jesus Edition. Oh, God. Assassin's Creed during the dinosaur days. Oh, God. You, you can find out the origin between the Templars and Assassins. The if start actually, over the ro- a rock. to see a story like that. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah, I, like know, I, I would like to know how that happened. Yeah, but if it, I mean, if it was already going on during the Crusades or whatever the first one takes place in, there's not much further we can really go back without stopping making sense. Well, what would they do in ancient Egypt? Ooh. Ooh. But Ooh. Uh, there's not. But you, all you have is desert. Yeah, that's so. true. That's even worse than the frontier. That'd be but, like that would be like EC one Damascus, but the whole game. Right. I could write in hieroglyphics, you know, like for the word yes, I could just draw an eagle. <laughs> or, okay. or hello would be like a little snake coming out of a, jo- a barrel or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's so weird. Oh. Okay, now it's my turn. I, this is really hard because there's so many per- time periods I could think of that would be kind of that would be interesting. Um. Okay, let's see. Okay, you guys did mob boss. You guys are, it seems like you guys are picking more of the modern time periods. I'm going to see if I can pick one that's a little bit more each. Well, actually, I do have one that's a little bit modern. I would pick, like, I would pick maybe, like, um, probably Industrial Age or Victorian Age London. I think that could end, lend itself for something interesting. Or... Um, going out of the western, going out of the western world a little bit. I'm gonna say probably something on the lines of maybe um, like like China or something, like ancient China. Mm-hmm. Because there's so much about like. Granted, I know that like, it seems like the assassins are meant to be a global operation, and we really have only been focusing in the western world for pretty much 99.9 percent of the entire franchise. So having a different side of the world, I feel like could lend itself to a lot of different. Um, and plus, with the Chinese, they always have a lot of they have a lot of different tech during different time periods. Because usually the Chinese have, like, I think they had gunpowder way before they had gunpowder way before the Western world had it. So, yeah. like, you could see like different applications for gunpowder, or you could see like, different weapons that they had, and use them to your advantage. Fireworks, man. Fireworks. That could work as a really good distraction. Exactly. Because, like, you know how... Oh, crap, my headset's dying, I think. Like, it's... 
beeping and flashing red. It's just one. Of, I just feel like it's one of those bits. Like you know how in the other games, like you could throw money on the ground and you could draw people's attention to it. Yes. You could lay down a fireworks trap in ancient China and you use that to distract people or distract uh, like the law enforcement or something. Yes. So I th- so if I had to pick, I would either choose like I, I do think the mob one is really cool. I would love to see that. Mm. But if I had to go with something a little bit different, I would choose either industrial slash Victorian age London. Or I would choose, or I would choose China, because Japan. That's kind of like that seems a little obvious to go with that because I mean with assassins you already have like ninjas and everything, so yeah. not so sure that would work uh, without like the contradictions getting to overlapping. Well, um, I just thought of a good idea. Huh? What if the assassins went to meet ninjas in the 1800s when America first came to Japan? You mean like when uh, Matthew C. Perry came over? Yes, exactly. Oh! Ooh, that would be really cool. Or they could get something like The Last Samurai. Mm-hmm. That'd be fun. <laughs> that would be that would be fun. Or maybe... Um, Samurais versus ninjas. Oh my goodness. But no, assassins We know what happened. We know ninjas. what happened. We know what happened, yes. But, or maybe, um, maybe the assassins, maybe this could be a point where we could see the assassins maybe traveling across the world trying to spread their influence and trying to build a foothold in other regions of the world, and the assassins start the ninjas. Like, yes. they, bas- they build the basic idea of the ninja and then start it in Japan. That would be really cool, because if you think about it, they kind of act the same way. Not to mention the assassins, they will take anybody into their cause. Yeah, and it was usually among the lower class citizens that ninjas would take. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that's that's the thing that's enough here because my headset dies. I can't edit the end of the video. That's fine. And we're about thirty minutes again because we don't have any idea how to do a fifteen minute discussion. But I will. That's that's our thoughts on the whole Assassin's Creed Four and where we want it to go, where we think it'll go, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So thanks for listening. Um, go check out Dogongo, Hardcore Usopp, Carbon Fist 17, The RMG Gaming, and of course other content here on RMG MD Punk. And you guys have a great day, and we'll see you for next week for another discussion. Bye. Good day. Yeah.